what, what this heralds really is fundamentally uh, a new era in space flight, a new era in space exploration. We're, we're going to go to the moon, we're going to have a base on the moon, we're going to send people to Mars have, and, and make life multiplanetary. And I think this, this day heralds a new age of space exploration. SpaceX Dragon has been the most talked spacecraft in this century. It is the only commercial U.S. spacecraft capable of ferrying U.S. astronauts to and from the ISS. Moreover, it has achieved many astounding records that no vehicle has done before. While cool, Dragon is just a short-term play for SpaceX, as it doesn't align with the company's ultimate goal, Mars colonization. So, there will come a day when we will have to say goodbye to this wonderful flagship and welcome a whole new kind of vehicle rapidly reusable propulsive landers. That is exactly what SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, revealed recently. Find out everything in today's episode. Without the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, NASA astronauts would still have to learn Russian to get to the International Space Station, ISS. The retirement of NASA's space shuttle in 2011 marked a significant transition for the agency, leading to a period of reliance on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. This dependency lasted nearly a decade and posed challenges to U.S. human spaceflight capabilities. However, the tide has turned since the historic event on May 30, 2020, with the launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon crew capsule from Florida's Kennedy Space Center to ISS. This marked the first time since 2011 that humans had blasted off into orbit from U.S. soil. Clearly, the introduction of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft has revitalized America's human spaceflight program, ushering in a new era of domestic space exploration. So far, the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft made 43 visits to the ISS since 2019, carrying both crew and cargo for NASA. The agency recently even hired SpaceX to rescue two Americans stuck at the space station after Starliner's problems forced the agency to order the vehicle to return to Earth empty. Furthermore, the flagship leaves the world in awe by conducting two all-civilian missions to orbit, Inspiration 4 in September 2021 and Polaris Dawn in September 2024. The success of these missions represents SpaceX's giant leap towards commercializing spaceflight. Along with high reliability, Dragon stands out for its cost-effectiveness. The cost per seat on its crew version is much cheaper than its competitors. With around $55 million while that of Boeing's Starliner, and Russia's Soyuz are respectively $90 and $86 million. Moreover, on Dragon, cost is inversely proportional to modernity. As you can see, the interior of the spacecraft is indeed designed with a modern aesthetic and incorporates advanced technologies that enhance both functionality and comfort for astronauts. Despite being cool, SpaceX decided to end production of its flagship crew capsule as the company heaps resources on its next-generation spaceship program. Elon Musk talked about it in his recent tweet, Dragon is awesome as a capsule architecture, but we need to move beyond that to rapidly reusable propulsive landers. The rapidly reusable propulsive lander that he mentioned is the fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle, Starship. Compared to other landing methods, Propulsive landing technology offers several advantages to spacecraft. It allows for greater accuracy in targeting specific landing sites. By using onboard engines to control descent, spacecraft can adjust their trajectory in real time, ensuring they land exactly where intended, which is especially beneficial for missions requiring precise landings on planetary surfaces. It also can slow their approach speed significantly, resulting in softer landings. This capability minimizes the forces experienced upon touchdown, which is crucial for protecting sensitive equipment and cargo on board. Spacecraft designed for propulsive landings can be reused multiple times, significantly reducing the cost of access to space. A typical example is the case of Falcon 9's rocket, given that its booster can be reused over 10 times with minimal maintenance between flights. Talking about landing location, Normally, Dragon using parachutes and splashdown requires vast open areas or bodies of water. Propulsive landing enables spacecraft to land in a variety of environments, including rugged terrains or urban areas. This offers flexibility in conducting various missions including orbital and suborbital missions. Of course, Dragon could land propulsively, but that's only a backup option to the parachutes and splashdown. You can get it certified to do so. 
but it makes no sense given Starship, space's bold project. The company's ambition is to develop the largest and most advanced vehicle that will replace its current fleet of Falcon rockets and Dragon spacecraft. It explains why Elon ended production of Dragon to heaps of resources on the giant vehicle. The crew spacecraft is primarily used for the national scientific missions rather than the civilian counterparts, so it is designed to carry from two to four people and over three tons to the ISS. Crew Dragon was specifically designed for low Earth orbit and, in order to send it to the moon, would require a ton of modifications. Meanwhile, SpaceX has plans to establish a permanent human presence on Mars, and it is estimated to cost a lot of money. According to Musk, recent U.S. Mars missions have cost approximately $1 billion per ton of useful payload delivered to the Martian surface. This high cost, which has been increasing over time, presents a significant barrier to establishing a self-sustaining city on Mars. Musk estimates that building such a city would require at least a million tons of equipment, translating to an astronomical cost of over $1,000 trillion, far exceeding the current U.S. GDP of $29 trillion. However, Musk believes that a 1,000-fold improvement in rocket technology could be the key to making Mars colonization financially viable. With such advancements, he projects that the cost could be reduced to around $1 trillion, which could be spread over 40 or more years, resulting in an annual expenditure of less than $25 billion. He points to SpaceX's Starship as a system designed to achieve this ambitious goal of a 1,000-fold improvement over existing rocket technologies. The recent successful test flight of Starship, which included a booster catch and precise ocean landing of the upper stage, has bolstered Musk's confidence in the system's potential. He stated, I am now convinced that it can work, referring to Starship's ability to revolutionize space travel and make Mars colonization a reality. Rapid development with Starship makes the most sense, because to carry Dragon to orbit, you really need a separate rocket, Falcon 9, which directly makes more work and costs more expenditure. Unlike Starship, Falcon 9 isn't fully reusable and has multiple bottlenecks to scale up even more launches per year. As we know, the Falcon 9's first stage is designed for reuse, but the second stage is not. This means that each launch still requires a new second stage, which increases costs and complicates the overall reusability model. The reliance on a single-use second stage limits the full economic benefits of reusability that SpaceX aims to achieve. Additionally, to facilitate the recovery of the first stage, additional propellant and landing gear must be carried, which results in approximately a 30% reduction in maximum payload capacity compared to an expendable Falcon 9. This trade-off can deter customers who require maximum payload efficiency for their missions. Starship, by contrast, has both stages that are recovered after each launch. Elon Musk announced that the Super Heavy rocket that returned safely after launch can be relaunched within an hour, adapting to Starship's high launch cadence. Instead of landing gear, Starship is caught by a gained advanced structure, namely Mechazilla. This helps to reduce the dead mass on the vehicle, increasing its payload capacity. For sure, Dragon is great, but Starship is the future. Fully and rapidly reusable orbital spacecraft are essential for establishing a permanent presence on Mars. The move from familiar vehicles to more technologically challenging vehicles reflects Musk's vision and determination. Okay, now let's talk about another interesting tidbit about Dragon Cargo. On Monday night, November 4th, SpaceX launched the robotic Dragon aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for a ride to the ISS. It's the 31st commercial resupply mission for SpaceX on behalf of NASA and is therefore known as CRS-31. As usual, it is delivering several tons of supplies and scientific experiments. But one difference is that for the first time, the Dragon spacecraft reboots the ISS by firing the aft Draco engines for roughly 12 minutes. The primary purpose of the test is to collect data. SpaceX needs to develop the U.S. deorbit vehicle NASA will use to send the ISS into the ocean at the end of its lifetime. The ISS partners were planning to use Russian Progress cargo spacecraft to deorbit the ISS, but after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, NASA decided an alternative was necessary. The agency selected SpaceX to build it based on the Dragon design. Also, the ISS needs to be periodically reboosted to compensate for atmospheric drag 
and maintain the correct altitude. Throughout the ISS's lifetime, Progress cargo spacecraft, or thrusters, have performed this task on Russia's Zvezda module. In 2018, Northrop Grumman did a reboost test using Cygnus. But it was not until 2022, as Russia was threatening to invade Ukraine and questions arose about Russia's commitment to the ISS, that NASA started using it operationally. Cygnus's reboost capabilities are quite limited compared to Progress and Zvezda, however, and Russia continues to conduct the vast majority of reboost operations. Cargo Dragon's capabilities also are limited, but Bill Spech, NASA ISS Operations Integration Manager, said that this is an important flight test objective for this mission, as we continue to increase the capabilities of all the vehicles on ISS. NASA's Artemis program, as a reincarnation of the now-canceled Constellation program, is increasingly mired in trouble even though it has just started. Prior to the unpiloted Artemis 1 test flight in late 2022, NASA's SLS rocket, Artemis's main launch vehicle was criticized for its cost overruns and delays. Additionally, during the re-entry of the Orion spacecraft under Artemis 1, its heat shield was detected to be cracked and chipped away. What caused it became a burning question. The persistent investigation into the heat shield issue forced NASA in January to announce a delay in the launch of Artemis 2 from late 2024 until September 2025. Finally, hard work pays off. NASA currently knows what caused the erosion of the Orion spacecraft's heat shield following its historic trip to the moon in 2022. However, what confuses us the most is NASA's weird silence. We have conclusive determination of what the root cause is of the issue. Lori Glaze, acting deputy associate administrator at NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, said, but I'm not going to share right now. When it comes out, it will all come out together. After the root cause analysis is done, the space agency will be running additional tests to mitigate the crew capsule's erosion during atmospheric re-entry, which will be completed by the end of November. This clearly shows that they know exactly what is wrong and how to fix it going forward. Nevertheless, there is a problem the heat shield for Orion that's going to be used for Artemis II has already been installed at the bottom of the crew capsule. Therefore, replacing any of its components would require undoing the spacecraft. This would certainly delay the Artemis II mission by a year or more. At this point, there are two options for NASA managers. Either decide it is safe enough to fly the Orion heat shield as is on Artemis II, or it is too risky with people on board. We know what needs to be done for future missions, but the Artemis II heat shield is already built. So how do we assure astronaut safety with Artemis II, Glaze said. NASA astronaut Reed Wiseman, Artemis II mission commander, shared a similar sentiment. This crew, we're not going to launch until we know we're ready, until our team knows that the vehicle is ready and we will keep the pressure on. In such a sensitive context, it is not difficult to understand if NASA keeps the Orion heat shield problem secret. It might be because it could be really bad. You know, NASA is often well known for being less transparent about issues. A typical example is the case of Boeing Starliner's first crew test, when they initially hid a lot of information and only provided information in a drip manner under the public's pressure. This is pretty similar to what happened in the Orion's heat shield investigation. The agency first revealed the unexpected performance of the Orion heat shield in March 2023 four months after the end of the Artemis 1 mission, and we have to wait nearly a year and a half after the mission's return to Earth to see a report from NASA's Inspector General Watchdog that included the first publicly available images of the Orion heat shield's condition after splashdown. Another report released by the Government Accountability Office GAO, in June said a preliminary analysis of the heat shield problem suggested to engineers that the permeability of the material was lower than their models had indicated. On the other hand, some argue that NASA should be sure before making anything public to avoid a major media crisis. Talking about this, someone who works in aerospace and thermal analysis gives his own opinion. I've made mistakes over the years of giving people predictions too early and it always bites you in the ass. I tend to not report things these days unless I feel fully confident in what I'm reporting because people will 100% run with whatever you give them. So, how about you? Is it reasonable for NASA to remain silent about the root cause of the Orion heat shield during this time. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. So, is there any alternative option in this case? 
frankly, a few years ago, facing the long-term delay and the exorbitantly high costs of both Orion's crewed spacecraft and the SLS rocket, some aerospace engineers suggested NASA should consider SpaceX's Dragon as the low-cost alternative. In theory, Crew Dragon virtually fits this mission. It has a dry mass of fewer than 10 tons and 50% more internal space than the Apollo capsule that carried three astronauts to the moon. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy is certainly capable of launching a Dragon capsule with a crew and a hell of a lot of cargo at the same time. There, the vehicle would dock with a lunar lander that would carry the crew to the surface, while the Crew Dragon capsule remains in low lunar orbit. After sciencing on the moon, the astronauts would use the lander to return to the Crew Dragon, fire the return stage, and come home to Earth. This idea helps to dispel the concern of NASA Administrator Bridenstine, who was dismissive when asked about using dragons instead of Orion for the Artemis program. I think it's important to note that Crew Dragon was specifically designed for low Earth orbit, and in order to send it to the moon would require a ton of modifications, he said. I'm not saying you couldn't modify it, but if you modified it, it would look a lot like Orion. Additionally, SpaceX previously planned to build a big size version of Dragon, called Dragon XL. That spacecraft would weigh around 15 to 16 tons at liftoff and likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. Although it initially was required to transport cargo only under NASA's 2021st Gateway Logistics Services contract, SpaceX can come up with the idea to transfer it to the crewed version. It seems to be a fairly balanced and reasonable choice for both SpaceX and NASA, leveraging existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon and erecting no major technical hurdles. Nevertheless, there are a few obstacles here. Honestly, the Pika-X heat shield used on Dragon cannot withstand 2,760 Celsius during re-entry from the moon, hotter than a spacecraft sees when it re-enters the atmosphere from low Earth orbit. Pika is lighter, more brittle, and is installed in tile form with gaps. The A-coat heat shield on Orion can be installed with no gaps, but is harder to manufacture. Two different materials for two different mission profiles. Returning from LEO versus returning from the moon, NASA is afraid to completely change the type of heat shield on the spacecraft because it would probably harm Artemis's timeline. Not to mention, Falcon Heavy is not a human-rated rocket yet. Handling this matter also requires working on an unexpected level of complexity and time. As for using the Falcon Heavy as the launch vehicle for the Orion capsule, there are several issues with this scenario. First and foremost is the rather porky mass of the Orion and the relatively low high altitude performance of the Falcon upper stage. The Orion capsule weighs in at over 33 tons at launch complete with the service module, but the Falcon Heavy is only capable of delivering something in the order of 23 tons to lunar orbit, even in fully expendable mode. Another issue is the size of the Orion capsule itself, which at a diameter of over 5 meters, is already at the limit of such a fine rocket, red skinny, and long. The Falcon's basic structure was never intended to launch something as large as the Orion, and in order to make it work, you would need to basically redesign the bulk of the vehicle, which requires lots of time. Currently, SpaceX wants to focus more on Starship rather than Dragon or Falcon. As the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed, Starship is capable of carrying up to 150 tons of fully reusable payload and 250 tons of expendable payload to low Earth orbit. Better than the Falcon rocket, Starship is fully reusable, which significantly reduces the cost per launch. While SpaceX's Falcon rocket line has a base price of $70 to $150 million, Starship stands out much more with a price tag as low as $2 million to $3 million. In the long term, SpaceX's new generation rocket is certainly a perfect replacement for the company's current rockets, including Dragon and Falcon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.